What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trackside. It's your boy Cinema J here and we're brothers. We're happy and we're singing and we're colored. Well, they're not colored. I'm sorry, but the brothers. Y'all watched the Wayne Brothers before? Give me a high five. All right, you know what I'm talking about. If not, get out of here. Anyways, the brothers. The brothers. They're brothers. I, I just, my wife mentioned that to me last night. She's like, you should put that in a video. I was like, I'm gonna get copyright and I don't want it. But y'all know what I'm talking about. The brothers, they won. Jet Bieber is back. My boy shaved his face. The mustache is out of here. He dominated again. He's that dude. Adam C. Cirillo said, you know what? I'm talking, I'm talking too, much. too much. If it's your first time here, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Thank you for your support. Love you guys. Let's get straight into it. Welcome to Trackside. Jet Bieber is back. back. Yo, so Adam C. Cirillo said during qualifying that Jet Lawrence, we're looking at the fastest man in the world right now. So that was like, the way he said it, he was like, look, I'm gonna just come out and say it. Look, he's right. He's right. I had to rewind it and hear him say it again and hear the intent in his voice. Like, this man knows. For as a person who used to ride at that level, he knows those words are true. Jet is special, all right? We all want Eli Tomac to be the guy because half of this generation, more than half of this generation of fans watching right now has been watching and know that Tomac has just been the guy. But, but he's not the guy anymore. Like he's gonna pull up a good fight. Tomac is Tomac, but he's not the guy anymore. It's Jet Lawrence. Like even my son watches the, my four year old about to be five next month. And he's just like, no. I want Tomac to win. I was like, I think that's how we all feel. <laughs> or a large portion of us. But I'll be honest, man. I love watching Jet ride. His balance on the bike, that's that's my number one thing with Jet Lawrence that is so different. Other than also what Tomac pointed out in the press conference is that he doesn't make mistakes. In my opinion, he doesn't make mistakes because he's so balanced on the bike. What I mean by that is his body position on that bike, he's more so here. Doo -doo, you know, or from the side, he's more so here, here's the handlebars, bikes going everywhere, right? But Eli Tomac, he's more like here, like, you know, he's going where the bike is going and, oh, let me, let me do it from the side too, I, sh I, sh I should, right? Oh, he's, that's my impression of beast mode Tomac. But y'all get what I'm saying. Like Tomac, the way he rides the bike is super aggressive, but smooth at the same time. It's so unique. It's his own style. And when they asked him like, what's some things that Jet picked up from Tomac? And then asking Tomac, what's some things that he think he could pick up from the Lawrences? They gave simple, but really not much to say answers because there isn't much to say. Like Tomac's technique works for him in that bike. And that was his uh, Jet's thing, which is for Tomac's bike, certain things just work for him and that bike in certain sections of the track and for jet's bike certain things work for them and for their technique on that bike you got to think about it like this like jet and hunter said they developed their technique on a honda and that's integral for like what they're doing and i can't see them changing too much you know especially comparing the Yamaha, totally different bike than the Honda from all the information we have and all the reviews and blah, 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 blah. But like, man, that beast mode we used to see, like I noticed when he turns, he turns and, and uh, Brayton, I think pointed this out, uses a lot of his legs to move that bike. So like, it's all in the hips. Like he just, he can swing the bike around with his whole core. Whereas Jet and Hunter, Jet saying on AJ Catanzaro's video, um, one of the Moto Academy videos, the, the craziest thing to me here was hearing Jet say, I never get arm pumped. When he said this, I'm like, there's a reason for this. <laughs> Listen to this man. But like having your elbows up, and Deegan's good about this too, but let me back up, let me back up. Having your elbows up and being able to move the bike wherever you want, it's, man, doing this, how can your arms be pumped up if they not having to be down here and like, when you work out, this is a exercise position. This, you don't want your elbows here. Here, they just dangling, man. This is just going where the bike is going. That's what Jet and Hunter does, man. They just do this all day. How they tired, how? And Jet, James pointed this out too. Jet 
stands up. He was standing up more than Hunter, or Hunter was standing up less than Jet, and that, in my opinion, is what cost him, right? Like. Um, and Jet, I'll be honest, he just wanted to send it in there a little bit more than Hunter is. I mean, he's 21, he ain't got much to, well, he's got a lot to lose. <laughs> but, you know, like, man, he just sends it in there and I love to see it. Uh, for me right now, Jet Lawrence and Hunter Lawrence, uh, I'm sorry, Jet Lawrence and Hayden Deegan, those are the guys, man. Those guys, watching those guys, you just see that they're just different. They're doing things like, I wanna stick with the 450s right now, but I am so excited to talk about the 250 class. <laughs> but yo, Jet Bieber, if he grows his facial hair back, then he try to look like me. Almost, he, he kinda, of, he's got a little ethnic look to him. You know, I know they Aussies, but is it me? Like, the, I don't know, I can't find that clip. But he had, you know, before he shaved, he was getting a little this in, a little that. It was, it was giving ethnic. And you got, you got Hunter, Hunter, yeah. Hunter, uh, for all my Aussies out there. And you got Eli Tomac, Chase Sexton, so sad. I was heartbroken. I was devastated when I saw what happened to him. And I'm gonna be honest, Matt, I love watching these guys. I have a lot of respect for these guys. People will say that, like, I have respect for you or someone else, but they don't actually mean it. No, I have true respect for their abilities, for the things that they do on the track and off the track. And I'm not about to sit here and talk about bad about Chase or anything, but what I will talk about is, what Chase has said, <laughs> or what Chase has done. And that is the truth. So I'm not gonna give my opinion on any of this, I'm giving fact. The fact is, Chase, I saw I saw the little interview they threw up with Chase um, complaining about his bike on Title 24, and um, man, my boy has been vocal. Like, my boy don't care about the KTM Corporation, all right? You know, KTM is a corporation. Like, they just seem to be tight-knit, you know, they taking, you know, Gen Z's phones out here. Like, that's it. that's the KTM, just corporate to me. Um, and Chase is just, it's just funny how he's so vocal about his dislike for SMX and the tracks and certain certain aspects of it. Uh, a lot of guys wouldn't want to say anything like that. Christian Craig, if you watch his YouTube channel, his wife asked him <laughs> straight up, like, uh, how do you feel? Like, everyone's not liking the tracks. He was like, mm, I don't want to speak negative. I love what I do. I love the tracks. Boom. Hey. There's nothing wrong with that. My boy Chase, he's letting her loose. He is, he is telling all of his emotions. He's letting them out and I, hey, it is what it is, man. If he's unhappy with his bike setup, with his bike in general, then hey, you're on a team that should be able to figure it out. So KTM, figure it out. What he did was jump through that rhythm section carefully and then move to the inside. He moved to the inside, man. When you're leading or ahead of the pack at the beginning of a race, we all have seen it happen too often. Man, you don't cut inside with 20 guys behind you, man. You just don't do it. It doesn't end well, and it's just not safe, and it's not wise, you know? So I don't know what happened right there. It'd be interesting to hear what he says, but at the end of the day, it happened, and his hand. Comment below y'all's thoughts about Chase Sex, and what do y'all think? Honestly, truly, what do y'all think? Let's break the algorithm, okay? Let's get these videos going, man. Let's get the comments out there, Let's hit the like button. You know, for y'all, y'all people hitting the dislike button, that's engagement, you not heard me. Now, I wouldn't press it. Don't press it, you know? Just hit the like button. If you're gonna hit a button, hit the like button, okay? Uh, but he'll come back, he'll come back stronger. Can't wait to see Chase next year in Supercross. They got some time to figure this bike out and they might have more time than we thought because I don't know if he's gonna race nations. What do you guys think? I think they're gonna call Tomac and I think they're gonna go. <laughs> That's what I think, straight up. AP, he's also jacked up. What they call Justin Cooper. He's a, he's a guy who goes, but usually on the 250. We can have an all-star squad now. I'm just at a loss for words for a few of the things that happen, man. Jet is doing Jet things. Hunter, man, for a guy who just didn't even make the first main event of the year, hey, props to him, rookie year. He gets rookie of the year for me. Uh, I don't even think anyone mentioned a rookie of anything this year. Maybe they did, I don't know, but Hunter gets the rookie of the year for me. So congratulations, Hunter. Congratulations, Jet. And hey, congratulations, Tomat, from coming outside of the top 10, starting this thing to third in your first SMX. So that was great. Tomac is still that dude, man. Like I said, take out Jet, take out Hunter. You got. Tomac still doing Tomac things. Now we got another level. 
We got another level. I, the way I see it, Jet got us back at the James Stewart level. What do y'all think about that? We can make a video about that, comparing Jet to James. Like, you know, James raced some of these guys, and the way James used to beat some of these guys, it's like the way Jet is beating some of these guys. So, man, I would love to watch that. But I think we're not going to see a Ricky and James type of, thi uh, type of deal until Hayden Deegan moves up to 450s. Let's talk about the 250s. All right, guys, so 250s was interesting. Hayden Deegan did Hayden Deegan things. Hey, best moment of the race for me, whole race, even 450s. Best moment of the race was Hayden Deegan passing, who did he pass, who did he pass, who did he pass? Who did he pass? For the lead in the first race? Dang, who did he pass? Oh no, it was that second race. I can't remember who he passed. I ain't got the highlights around me, but whoever he passed, I'm gonna put it right here. Man, my boy sitting over that wall jump. I was like, whoa, it was like midnight. You know, I'm on the East Coast. And I, man, I was woke all the kids up, man. That was, I love that when he passes somebody, he throws it down. Like, if I was riding a dirt bike at that level, I don't, but I wish I did. That's what I would do. I'm passing a guy and I'm throwing her down, but I'm throwing her down. I'm, I'm, I'm scrubbing. I, I know James love it. That's what, man, I'm letting her eat. I'm letting her loose. I'm letting her breathe. And that's what he do. That's what he did. I love it. You gotta love it, man. Like the energy from him is just, oh, it's just good. I can feel it. It's like, let's go, man, let's go. So that was exciting, man. And um, I'm happy for the kid. Uh, you know, he deserves it. Like I said, put in hard work, a lot of hard work on the days off so that when you come to the race, man, it's just another day at the job. You prepare, prepare yourself. Proper preparation prevents poor performance, guys. And that's what Hayden Deegan exudes, you know what I'm saying? So, funny moment in the press conference yesterday, asking Tom V out, Levi Kitchen, um, what's some things that you guys uh, think, you know, would have to happen to Hayden Deegan for you to win? And uh, uh, Levi Kitchens was the funniest talking about, well, if he gets bad starts like that, then, and then Hayden's like, but I still won. Come on, man, that's just tough. Like, what are you gonna do with that? What is anybody gonna do with that next year? Like, people gonna have to take him out. I hope they don't. That's like Jet said, that's just the easy way. But hey, if somebody wanna win a championship, I had to take him out. You gonna have to think about that, cause he gonna, he gonna come back with something the next race. Like, they, I, the Deegan type of kid, it's like, you take him out and he he already lasts, he probably just cut the track on some J-Law stuff and just, just oh, I lost the bike, hit the person in first place. Nah, I'm just messing, I'm sorry, I don't even condone nothing like that. But I'm just saying, if you take him out, you better look out the next race. Yeah, man, hey, Hayden doing, Hayden Deegan Hayden doing Hayden Deegan things. I love it, it's great. Pierce Brown, Pierce? Asian Persuasion Brown. I don't know, what is he? Doesn't matter. Pierce Brown is doing, I can't even say Pierce Brown things, man. Like, what is this? Who is this guy? He said he raced the whole season this year. Where, Where was, he? was he? I thought he was injured again. Like, I ain't see the guy, but that just goes to show with the broadcast how many guys they actually show and how many guys they don't show. Like, I was like, yo, he raced the whole season? Really? Like, he didn't even get a podium? Like, a top five? Did he get a top five? Like, man, my boy has something to prove. I don't know if it was the Venom uh, or what, but something, I was looking, I was like, man, it's gotta be the Venom, something's in him. But hey, the whole team wore the Venom. He seemed to be the only one with the symbiotic, you know, performance going on. But uh, hey, props to Pierce Brown. I loved his ride, man. I always would see like Pierce Brown, like his style is good. His technique is good. His speed is good. His fitness even seems good. But hey, in his own words, gotta get stars. Like, if anybody could take anything from Hayden, honestly, and Tomac, you know, hey, might have to invest in that paddle. That's the thing with this whole league nowadays, man. All of these guys are good. Now, there's some, now, Hayden Deegan, yeah. So whoever's on the coast without the Hayden Deegan next year, anybody got a chance. The way I see it, you know, unless Fortner comes back. I feel like, I always feel like if Fortner is there, like he's, he's gonna win the title, but we all know what happens. I don't even wanna talk about it. Tom Vial, talk about him, um, placing second, you know, I can't say solid second, going down like that. That, that mistake he made with Masterpool, to be honest, I just, man, I don't know what happened there. It's just, he wasn't patient. And that's, this is my thing with Tom Vial. Tom Vial is in a position where he's gotta find that right balance of aggression to 
and 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 skillness and and the way to attack the track like Hayden but not do too much. Tom Vial really wanted to get past Masterpool in that spot but that was a bad spot. Uh, he just should have just held up a little bit more, be a little patient and honestly if he would have just waited up, got behind him, hit the rhythm section, he could have just stayed to the inside more than likely he had an opportunity to pass or we know he was going to pass him but he just wasn't patient so I think he's got to work on all that man. He's got to be patient He's got the skills, he's got all that stuff. So either way, Tom Vial's in good hands. The kid's looking strong. He's coming back next year with number one play if he defends, chooses to defend uh, the coast that he was on. Uh, so either way, I'm excited to see him. And I like how he said, man, I just gotta work on motocross because I don't wanna get beat like that again. So hey, Tom Vial motocross next year. Woo, I can't wait to see it. Anyways, I'm not gonna do a race craft today. I'm gonna briefly talk about attacking the track. All right, I'm trying to wrap this up, but uh, we just gonna call this the wrap up, but who attacked the track the best? Hayden Deegan, 250s, Jet Lawrence, 450s. I know I sound like a broken record, but like, yo. Well, I take that back. Let's switch it up. We're gonna give it to Pierce Brown for the 250s. Pierce Brown attacked the track. He was attacking the track so much, even Hayden was like, oh, my boy is out of here. It ain't even worth it. Like, Pierce Brown was on a mission. He, he was like, in his head, he was the guy that night. Like, he's nowhere to be found. My boy went from seventh in points to third. Like, come on, man. The teams, the team is out of here. It was the last race for them, you know, and he he let her eat. And I loved it. That was great, man. Like, the way he was attacking the track, not giving a crap about Hayden Deegan and what he's got going on, anybody else. He was racing like it was his championship. And I loved that. Like, he wasn't looking back. He was focused for it. And he was, he was just, he was just letting that gas, gas have it, man. He was letting that Las Vegas sawdust, all that dirt have it. And, and I loved it. And Jet, just look at him, man. Just look at him. We're watching Beast Mode out there, but then you got this guy just following him, not letting him go, hounding him, making the Beast look like he's made of yeast. And just, just like, yeah, let me just, mm, let me just strong arm you right here on this, on this checkup, man. Like, Jet is just riding this 450 like it's a 85cc two-stroke, man. It's the craziest thing. Now, nah, more than a uh, better comparison. He's riding this 450 like a 125, and that's what it looks like, which is absolutely amazing to me. I don't know what you do with something like that besides throw James Stewart $10 million and say, hey, can you train, get back on the bike, and come beat this guy. I, I, don't, I don't know. Hunter, eh, Hunter is at peace with everything. Uh, to me, it ain't that serious, the Hunter, all right? Hunter races within his race, he races within himself, and he ain't going beyond that. Like, Jet, he'll take it there. And that reminds me of James. When he needed to, honestly, when he didn't even need to, he'll take it there. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm wrapping up. I've talked long enough. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. If you haven't subscribed, what are you doing, man? Come on, I ask this every week. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you made it this far, I think you enjoyed it, right? So it really helps the channel out. You know, hit the notification bell, obviously, of course, you know, to get notified, let you guys know when I post something. I'm just going to be posting whenever, wherever the season is over. So let me know what y'all want me to talk about. What's something you want to hear? What's some cool, you know, just drop it in the comments, man. Oh, yeah, I, I miss you. I, I miss you on the last few videos, but the Whoop Monster from Millville, man, the guy commenting, emailing me, I just wanted to shout him out, man. I know he retired, but hey, kudos to the Whoop Monster. You dedicated a lot to this sport. We love seeing you on the broadcast. That's really cool, man. But anyways, guys, go check out all the major channels, man. And stay in tune with this stuff if you love the sport. I love this sport. Look, some call this a competition with all these channels. I don't, man. I love everything about dirt bikes. I watch all this stuff when I got time. But hey, I love it. I know you love it. Who's ready for next year? What do you want to see next year? And hey, go ahead and like the video. It really helps out. Let's break that algorithm. Let's break the algorithm. Just drop a comment saying algorithm. I don't care. It doesn't even matter. Drop a comment saying dirt bikes because that's what we do. All right. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. Take care. Catch you in the next one. Peace.